Abraham Lincoln, the Texas Revolution, and a World War II raid are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is February 23rd, 2023. It is the 54th day of the year. There are 311 days left. It is the 8th Thursday in the 8th week and the 65th day of winter. There are 25 days left until spring. Today is National Tootsie Roll Day. Yeah, we celebrate that on February 23rd. It is a day dedicated to celebrating this chocolate-flavored candy that has been a favorite among people throughout the generations. The Tootsie Roll is an American favorite, and that's why it gets its own day. Do you know it's been over 115 years since the Tootsie Roll was developed? Yeah, no kidding. In 1907, in Brooklyn, New York, the Tootsie Roll had its birthday. Its inventor was named Leo Hirschfeld. Leo Hirschfeld was an Austrian Jewish immigrant who opened up his candy shop in Brooklyn in 1896. The store was obviously profitable selling candy. Then 11 years after he opened his candy shop, he submitted the first patent for his candy he called the Tootsie Roll. He named the candy after his daughter Clara, who was nicknamed Tootsie. Leo sold his business in 1935. The head of the new company was named Joseph Rubin, and he made some pretty good moves and eventually got a comic strip in the newspaper called Captain Tootsie Roll. This just made the candy even more popular. Still going to this day. I think it was a Tootsie Roll or a Milk Dud when I was like, I don't know, 13, I was in the movies and I was eating one of them. I think it was a Tootsie Roll. Anyway, I chewed on one and I guess it stuck to one of my fillings. Pulled it right out of my mouth. Should have been a sign. Stop eating candy. All right, let's see what else February 23rd has given us. 1836, the Texas Revolution. The Siege of the Alamo begins in San Antonio, Texas. Of course, sometime later, the Battle of the Alamo takes place and all the defenders, including Davy Crockett, are killed. 1861, President-elect Abraham Lincoln arrives secretly in Washington after the thwarting of an alleged assassination plot in Baltimore, Maryland. 1886, Charles Martin Hall produces the first sample of aluminum from electrolysis of aluminum oxide after several years of intensive work. He was assisted in the project by his older sister, Julia. 1905, Chicago attorney Paul Harris and three other businessmen meet for lunch to form the Rotary Club, the world's first service club. They had this interesting thing. This girl I knew got a hold of them uh, this many years ago, but she wanted to travel and she didn't have the money to do it. And someone told her about the Rotary Club would give her money to travel. This was in Southern California. I don't know if this was a common thing for the Rotary Club. And this was back before everyone had a video camera. So she took a camera with her and really all they wanted was like a show at the end. So she she did all this travel through Europe and they paid for a lot of it. And when she came back, she developed a slideshow, which she narrated for them. This is like in 1990. They liked it so much. Another Rotary Club sent her to Asia. I think the fact that she was a college student at the time had something to do with it also. But, you know, it's probably some kind of scholarship thing. I always thought that was very interesting. 1945, World War II, the 11th Airborne Division with Filipino guerrillas free 2,147 captives at the Los Banos internment camp in what General Colin Powell would later refer to as the textbook airborne operation for all ages and all armies. Whenever you're doing a military operation, it's never flawless. This was pretty close. Now, during World War II, there were a few airborne assaults, Market Garden, D-Day, Operation Husky, and Operation Varsity. Of the five airborne divisions during World War II, only one was assigned to the Pacific, the 11th Airborne Division. Airborne operations really weren't that common in the War of the Pacific. So by February of 1945, the Japanese hold on the Philippines was coming to an end. It was obvious they were about to lose. Certain islands had already fallen to the Allied forces. Then the Allied command got wind of some of the atrocities that the Japanese forces were doing on civilians and especially prisoners. Now they'd Kind of had an idea what was going on, but then the Palawan massacre happened. 150 prisoners of war, mostly Americans, were on a work camp in the Philippines. The Japanese, for one reason or another, decided they needed to get rid of these guys. So they faked an air raid, and the American soldiers and whoever else was there ran into the bomb shelters, which the Japanese had basically filled with gasoline. Once they went in there, they lit it on fire. Anyone that tried to come out was shot or bayoneted. A 11 men survived and got to Allied-controlled land, and that's how they found out what was going on at these camps. 
So the American command, the Allied command, decided they needed to do something at all the other prison camps they knew about. Los Banos was one of them. So on February 3rd, they started putting a mission in place. While the 11th Airborne was training and preparing for the airborne assault, various Filipino guerrilla groups operating in the vicinity of Los Banos were organized and they gave a whole bunch of intel of what was going on there and how to raid the place. Well, they got their plan together and it went in four different phases. Phase one began when the 11th Airborne's provisional reconnaissance platoon, together with some 20 Filipino guerrilla guides, would travel behind enemy lines on fishing boats, and they would wait outside the camp and kind of do reconnaissance stuff. Phase two was some machine gun crews parachuting into a small drop zone not too far from the camp. They hooked up with guerrilla units that were already in place, and they set up. Phase 3, the remainder of the 1st Battalion on board 54 LVTs, which are amphibious assault tracks, like an armored vehicle that floats. They landed on the island two miles from the camp. And then Phase 4 were glider infantry, which are part of the Airborne Division, or regiment in this case. They don't have glider infantry anymore. Now, the glider infantry was kind of like a distraction because there was the Japanese 8th Division down the road, and they kind of kept them busy so they wouldn't go reinforce the camp while the tracked vehicles, the machine gun crews, and the Filipino guerrillas attacked the camp. The different parts of the raid worked perfectly. Everyone was in place. Everyone did what they had to. Now, in total, the Japanese guards were in between 150 and 250. That's at the camp. And then there was eight to 10,000 Japanese soldiers at the nearby camp that the glider infantry were dealing with. In the end, at least 80 Japanese were killed. The United States only had three soldiers killed and two wounded. That is it. The Philippine guerrillas lost two and only four were wounded. I mean, I know it's horrible when any one dies, but in World War II, in a situation like this, those are amazingly low numbers. 1983, the United States Environmental Protection Agency announces its intent to buy out and evacuate the dioxin-contaminated community of Times Beach, Missouri. 1998, in the United States, tornadoes in Central Florida destroy or damage 2,600 structures and kill 42 people. Premiered on February 23rd, 2021, Superman and Lois. This is not Clark and Lois or Lois and Clark like they had back in the 90s. This was a new spin on an old tale. It was okay. They did one season. The second season, I believe, is about to come out in a few days. But it's a superhero drama series following the lives of the DC comic couple Superman and Lois Lane. The series exists in the CW Arrows universe, which is kind of interesting in itself, and features crossover and communities with other franchises. They had big plans of it, and then when the coronavirus hit, it kind of fell apart. It was supposed to come out in 2020, but didn't come out until 2021. They thought the series was going to end after one season, but they approved it for the second. And then just recently, they approved it for a third season. It's not bad for a Superman show. I'm not a Superman fan. Born on February 23rd, 1994, Dakota Fanning. As a child actress, she appeared in films such as Man on Fire, War of the Worlds, and Charlotte's Web. She had her breakthrough role in I Am Sam at the age of seven. And in 2002, she became the youngest person in history to be nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award. She played great parts in all those movies. I never saw Charlotte's Web, but all the other ones were great. I Am Sam, where Sean Penn plays her father who is mentally disabled and he raises her. Interesting, interesting movie. She began her career in national commercials for Tide when she was only five years old. She starred in the 2010 film, The Runaways, with Kristen Stewart. That's an interesting story. It's about the rock band, The Runaways, that were kind of thrown together in the late 70s, early 80s. It's where Joan Jett and Lita Ford came from. Died on February 23rd, 1848, John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, who was also an influential diplomat, U.S. senator, and U.S. congressional representative. He traveled to Europe with his father, to France, and to the Netherlands. He was a skilled diplomat with many historic precedents, including being part of the end of the War of 1812 and closing off North and South America to European colonization with the Monroe Doctrine. His death is sort of interesting. On February 21st, 1848, the House of Representatives was discussing the matter of honoring United States Army officers who served in the Mexican-American War. Adams had been a vehement critic of the war and as a congressman rose to say A in favor of the measure but instead yelled no. He immediately collapsed, having suffered a massive cerebral hemorrhage. 
Two days later, on February 23rd, he died at 7.20 with his wife by his side in the Speaker's room inside the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. His only living child, Charles Francis, did not arrive in time to see his father alive. His last words were, This is the last of Earth. I am content. Among those present for his death was Abraham Lincoln, a freshman representative from Illinois. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.